you won't want me walking through your door with this. <laughs> what do you? Everything in the world has to become secondary. You've got to become obsessed to the point where people think you're crazy. You discipline yourself every day to do what is required. You sweat, you suffer, you endure, and at the end of it all, you win. It begins right now with no one looking, man. How you hold yourself, how you see yourself. What are you doing when no one's watching? If you do it then, I guarantee you, you'll be doing it when everyone's watching. If today you never say good enough, tomorrow you'll always have enough. Keeper, yeah, I've just worked him, so we have to give him some rest. Mm. You want to do with Kevin, don't you? Yeah, I can do Elsa at home. Elsa's at home, but we can do her at home. Yeah. Who else do you like? Who else is here? Mm. Zara? Yeah. She likes you. But they don't want to No, that's Arlo, he begs. Mm. You could do some with him. Yeah. He's on my to do list. Yeah. And. Ah, what about one of your favourites? Low key. Okay, we'll do low key. What's going on? Ariel's coming to do some work. Because she wants to work dogs, don't you? Tell him, yeah. what do you want to do? Work dogs. Yeah, so, she comes to join us at work today. So you have forgot your training vest. No, I haven't forgot So where is it? I left it, but I think I've got this instead. Okay. Called in more. Okay. The next time you come to work, you have to bring all your equipment, don't you? Come on, let's go to work. Say his name, mm -hmm. and then you give him a reward. Mm -hmm. So you say Kevin, and then you give him a reward. Mm -hmm. And that way, he's interested in what you have. So Kevin, good boy. Well done. Yep, really good. Now come towards me. That's really, really good. Brilliant. Now stop and give the reward. Say good boy. Well done, Kevin. That's really good. You did good there. And he's quite a high energy dog, so you're doing really good. Okay, so sit. And give him a treat. Do you want another one? Do a bit more close with him. Now say stay, okay. walk away, that's really good, so you sit staying now and you go back and you give him the treat because he stayed. Yes, good boy! Okay, see so he's still staying, turn down. Well done, now do a close. Good. Well done, that's good for Well done, that's good. Ariel, is he one of your favourite dogs? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Aww, you love Loki, don't you? Yeah. Can we do him again after? You always want to do him again, yeah. but he's tired. He just loves being with you, doesn't he? Yeah. Do you remember the video you did in the town centre? Yeah. Do you know how many people saw that video? Yeah. How many? I don't know. Nearly six million. Six million. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. Yeah, that's more than any of my videos. So you're famous. <laughs> and guess what? You know what we're doing today? What? We're filming for what do you watch every night? Odyssey. So now you're going to be in an Odyssey. Right. So you get to watch yourself every night now instead of me. Hey? When there's a new Odyssey, I watch that one until another one comes out. So you watch it for near enough a month yeah. until the next one comes out. Yeah. So when James is late with an odyssey, what do we say to him? Be quicker, don't we? Because tell him, don't you sit there waiting? Good boy. <laughs> Good. Why did you decide to bring Ariel in? Every day she asks me, can I work dogs? Every day, can I work a dog? And by the time you get home, on a night time, after working dogs, one sex we are. Are you gonna come to yeah, I'll come swimming with you tonight. <laughs> Every time you've worked dogs all day and you get home and you're knackered, the last thing you want to do is work dogs again. And I always feel bad for her, so Beth's brought her into work today. And look at her. 
This is her element. She's obsessed with being with the dogs. Good boy. I think he likes the microphone, James. He He's does. looking at the fluffy mic. Um, yeah, so she w literally, she watches an Odyssey every night of the week and she watches the same one over and over again until a new one gets released. I've got the one in until the other one's going to come on. Which one's next? Portugal. See, <laughs> she knows what's next. Ariel, how would you feel if Portugal was late? Angry. That'd See? be your fault. <laughs> Say again. That'd be your fault. My fault? Yeah. Not daddy's fault. No. That'd be your fault because you wouldn't have put it on. <laughs> she yeah. knows too well. <laughs> That's the plan for the rest of the day. She wants to work a couple more dogs and then, um, on, yeah, get some dogs done, get some protection done. And then I promise them I'll take them swimming tonight. So I'll go swimming with you. But mum. Yeah. Oh, well done. It was having a tickle as well. Oh, cool. Give us some more trees. Oh, are you a good boy? Hey? Alright, son. Hey, you a good boy. You alright, my pal? Let's keep with it. So, Ariel and dogs. Ariel's always had a thing for dogs. Look, she was practically born at the kennels. And back then when she was born, we didn't have many people working at the kennels. If anyone, I think there was about two of us altogether. So Beth was straight back to the work. After a week, I think, of having Ariel, she was already out with the pram every day of the week, walking dogs. And she'd just been used to them. Ever since, dogs have always licked her in the pram and the second she could start crawling, she'd always crawl towards dogs. And you could pretty much see that she loved animals. Even now when she comes home from school, she walks past me and straight to the dogs. And that's what she's like. And she asks me, she wants to do work. She comes in, she says, Dad, I want to work dogs. Can we work dogs? So it's not something I've pushed. You know, they can do whatever they want. But she actively loves working with the dogs. So when she asks for it, I say, yeah, we can do it. And on a weekend, she looks forward to doing obedience and training and she has favorites. And yeah, she loves dogs and I think she always will. And I strongly believe that she'll probably do something with animals later on in life. What's the importance of today? Socialisation, um, desensitisation to noise, to towns, to random things, to public, to everything. It's a massive part of a day-to-day -day life of a dog. So it's not really about obedience or fancy training. It's more just about socialisation and getting them good in public. If a dog can't behave in public normally, then it's going to be a difficult yeah. process for it. It has to be good in public. So. These days are very important and we need to do a lot more of them. Very important days.
So how do you think today's gone? It's been a good day. It's been a really good day for them. Just need more of it. Once the kennels are done and all the building work's done, we'll just make it three days a week. Yeah, go out three days a week, different places, different towns, different noises. It's quite warm as well. So, not as much as it would like to have done, but it's still good. Look, with me, I always look at developing the kennels. I always want to make it that bit better. Every time I do something, I look at it and think, nice, but I could do it better. And that's just the way I am with everything that I do, even with my training. So the kennels looks great, but I wanted it to be better. So I've completely redone the back. All the runs that we had there, all the metal runs are now been fully refurbed. It's still happening now. It's been a headache, but we've redeveloped all the back. So there's nice rendered and resin walls. There's brick pillars, they're all resin floors, the roof, we're putting heating in them. And it's a much nicer area out back now. Dogs don't live out back, it's just runs. It's exercise runs and cleaning runs. But it's a big part of the kennels, so yeah, there's a lot of work been going on out back there. No doubt I'll find something else to do once this is complete, but been progressing out back as usual. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks it's done and it'll look really, really nice. We're ready. So we're at the new site today, we're going to be doing some protection, some development with some dogs, covert with some of the young dogs, at first time covert, it's always tricky for them but they get used to it and yeah it's about development. Dog number one, hey up! The new facility was always a second facility. It's never a place I thought of moving the kennels. People say, are you moving the kennels there? No, we're not. It's a place where we wanted to go there, film, train, set up different environmentals, different scenarios. And because the team's quite big now, there's a team of 18 of us plus altogether. It's hard when you're in that small barn at the original kennels. So we've split it up. So training courses get done at the new facility and trade protection gets done at the new facility and the recall can be done at the new facility because there's seven paddocks there. It's a big site. There's loads of acres. There's loads of fenced off paddocks. We're going to be putting some agility courses there and we're going to be putting some different environmentals. So yeah, the new facility is a really handy place and it's helped a lot massively in all the training elements. And there's still a lot to progress there as well. As for tactical training, what is tactical training? Why do we do it? Some people do it to look cool. Some people do it because they genuinely need to do it. Having Roger on board has been great because the knowledge behind Roger is incredible. You can't buy that knowledge. You know, 23 years military, 13 years practically SAS, 22, and incredible. The knowledge he has and the things that we do with Roger have helped the business in a million ways, especially when you go to clients' houses. It's fantastic, they love it. Um, and the knowledge he brings to the table is so good. But the requests we get, we do tactical stuff because people ask for it. When the dogs go to America, a lot of people have weapons, a lot of people have guns, a lot of people want to put the dogs through that type of stuff. So, yeah, we're going to be doing more of it. One, I really enjoy it. The team really enjoy it. Two, Roger's great at helping us guide us through it and other things. But also, one of the big things too is absolute conditioning for the dogs. The dogs need to go through that type of training anyway. Not all. Some don't ever need to go through that type of training, but the ones that do, it's amazing. The dogs have to overcome all them things. Smoke, grenade, gunfire, 
different places, searching buildings, tactical stuff, going in and out of different obstacles, up and down stairs, up and down ladders, up and down different windows and buildings and in and out of cars and all that stuff. I'm not saying every dog needs to do that, of course they don't. But the dogs that are going to the US and certain places in the Middle East and other places, they need to do that. So yeah, we are going to be doing a lot of tactical training, but it is for a purpose. It isn't for the crack like some people do just to get a cool Instagram reel. People are genuinely requesting this, so the dogs have to go through it. And like anything, certain dogs we go there and they're not made for it. You look at it and you go, this dog's just not cut out for this level of work. And that's completely fine. He just gets placed in the right environment. But the dogs that people ask for have to go through it. So there will, there will be a lot of cool tactical stuff getting done. There'll be a lot of weapons involved in different places and environments and smoke and crazy stuff, but it's all for a good reason. And for the dogs and for the clients. So, this is what it all boils down to, training at home. So everything that you do is for a picture when it comes to a home invasion or robbery or scenario. So you build the foundations up, you do the bike work, you do the development, and the whole point is you start testing it at home, and that's where it becomes real. So some of the situations we're putting in place today is getting the dog to bite in concealed sleeves. That's one of the most important things. Yes, you can do suits and sleeves at home, but ideally, there needs to be someone in a completely concealed sleeve and that's what the dog should be aiming for. The person, not the equipment. So I've got a young dog, Jerry. He's only 13, 13 months old now. Um, not done, He's not by no means is he trained, but this is the development, this is the start of it. So the bite works solid, everything's great, obedience is great, socialization's great, kids, all that stuff. Now starting getting him used to biting people, activating on a person without the equipment, putting him through his paces a bit, starting to understand pressure. So sometimes it looks a little bit barbaric. People are go, oh, wow, you're putting so much pressure on the dog. You're not, you're teaching the dog and you're developing the dog and becoming a stronger dog and taking pressure because the likelihood is if it ever gets into a situation where it has to protect, no one's going to stand there and go, good boy, this is very nice and start stroking him. They're going to give the dog some stick. So they do take a bit of pressure during these exercises, but nothing that's harmful or dangerous. It's just enough to condition the dog to learning and understanding that it's okay. So Jerry, we'll start with Jerry, a young dog. It's not a proper scenario, it's a training exercise. So it's different. Sometimes you train an exercise so then you can plan it later on in life. So it's a complete training exercise, as I said, but then you'll do a scenario of a dog that's done, meaning there is no build up to it. It's simply a surprise attack. It's a surprise element. The dog's not expecting it. And that's a test, very different to a training exercise. So what we're doing with Jerry now is an exercise. After that, it'll be a scenario with Aurea. And then same thing with Blitz, just a scenario with Blitz. And simply walking into your garden, we've got quite a bit of land here. It's a very common thing that happens. People think it's just a field, but what happens is usually a partner walks down on a night time on her own to sort the animals out. There is a possibility that someone is in a part of the land waiting for them and the dog will have to react to that. So that is what we're staging tonight. Um, we've done loads of house robberies and stage robberies here, but tonight mainly, walking into a paddock, it's dark, someone's waiting for her, planning on robbing a watch or a ring or something like that, and she'll activate the dog on them. So it's a build-up, and that's what we're practicing tonight. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll be doing different scenarios at the house, inside, outside, in the alpaca field, getting out the vehicle, going into the carport, all different things, and then you know you've proofed the dog in the environment which it needs to work in. That's the main thing proofing each dog for each environment to keep the family safe.
How was that, Beth? Yeah, she done very well. I'm very proud of her, aren't I, Yes, I am. Good girl. Now, it's an important part of the training is staging, you know, these possible scenarios and everyone everyone has the fears, I have fears. And what we've done tonight was genuinely part of my routine and things, you know, that I'm not comfortable with. So it's an important part of the train to proof, you know, these possible scenarios and get yourself more comfortable as well with handling the dog so you know what to do in these situations as, as well as the dog as well. So Odyssey, this Odyssey is different to the other Odysseys. Of course, we've been doing a lot of travelling all over the world and stuff. A lot of things you can't film, sadly. Certain clients don't want filming, completely understand it, and I get it, and I never ask. You know, if it's okay, it's okay, and if it's not okay, it's completely okay. Um, and some of the people that we visit is incredible. Like, literally, you sit there and you go, no way was I just sat with that person. And you literally go home and you think, really? Have I just been sat with these people? Have I just met that type of person? And it was, like, amazing. And it's a shame because the reason for Odyssey was a documentary on the lifestyle, a life of what we do, places that we go, people that we meet, and it's a diary. I never did it for promotional reasons. I never did it to push it. I don't promote it. I literally do it because I enjoy it and my kids watch it every night. And I'm not kidding. They choose to watch it and they really enjoy it. And it shows them where I am when I'm away. And I'm away a lot and they always ask where I am. So when I tell them I'm out recording for Odyssey, they get excited, what's next? So this one's more about the UK, about what we've been doing but we've been progressing here. There is a lot to come. But it's been two years now we've been doing it, and I wouldn't say it's coming to an end, because I don't want to end it, but it's been hard, because there's a lot of editing and a lot of things to do, and I watch them, and I check everything, and I make sure we're okay, and I make sure that we comply with all what the customers ask for. Moving on to the next year, we're going to end Odyssey with a bang. We're really going to end it with a big bang this year. It was a massive visit to in Australia, and America and other places, America especially, there's a huge round trip to do there, which we'll do and we'll complete and we'll document it. Um, then we've got some other really cool places I'm not going to mention just yet, but we will be doing them before the end of the year. And next year, I'm going to be doing a mini doc. It's basically 10 minutes a month of where we are, what we're doing, all compressed into 10 minutes. I will bring Odyssey back after that year, but I'm really focusing on filming for the app and there's a lot of filming to do, as well as training the dogs and progressing dogs, which I genuinely love. So that's what I'll be doing. You walk different. All of a sudden, this isn't the same damn human being. You can change you. You'd be surprised what a little winning would do. You'd be surprised how good you'd be if you just decide to win. Be number one in your office, number one in your region. And when you start stacking them up, your life can change.